this is Brian Buckler from Provision Studios and today I'm going to show you a, uh, an important concept uh, that applies to anyone uh, that's doing recording regardless of whether it's your uh, first day hooking up your uh, home computer uh, with a new doll and you get ready to record your first track or if you've been recording uh, music for 20 years this is what I call a cornerstone con concept in that um, we are going to uh, look at calibrating our monitors uh, this is important because um, there may be certain inadequacies uh, from monitor to monitor uh, that you don't even realize um, and what I'm going to show you is going to allow you to dial in those uh, each monitor so that you're basically getting the same uh, level out of each one and it allows you to get a uh, better quality uh, mix or accurate mix uh, in your room so basically what we're, what we're what we're able to do is we are able to um, calibrate each monitor so that we're getting the same output from each one and also we're calibrating each monitor for the room that, that, that you're mixing in so we're knocking out two things pretty much in one step it's a pretty important concept you should always start here before you start mixing um, I should have showed this video a lot or I should have made this video a lot sooner uh, either way uh, better late than never um, all you need to do this is um, a, a, a program that you record in a doll and uh, preferably one that has a signal generator um, you will also need an SPL meter you can get one um, on the internet through an app store uh, you can download one for an iPhone or for a tablet or Android device um, I think the one I got is, uh, is, is a cheap one. Uh, I think I paid 99 cents for it. Uh, let's see, right here. That's the one I have on my tablet. And what you want to go for on it is you want to make sure that you have the ability to have C weighted. See here, it's A weighted. You'll be able to select C weighted. And you want to have it slow time. You don't want to have it on fast. You want to make sure you're able to calibrate at slow speed. And I'm going to be calibrating at 80 dB. Is sort of like my, my threshold or my ceiling that I'll be using today. Um, ideally, uh, you want to be somewhere in the uh, 75 to 85 dB range. And I'll show you all that once we get started. First off, like I said, you're going to need a doll. So, uh, again, for this, I'm going to use Studio One. What we're going to do is we're just going to simply, we're going to create a new song. It can be a blank, a blank session, and I'm just going to call it uh, uh, Monitor Calibration. And you can save this, and what you're going to do is um, you're going to want to calibrate your monitors every so often. Uh, the room does change depending on the time of the year and stuff like that. Uh, new furniture or new equipment you bring in may affect how things, um, how sound is reflected in your room. That all will be uh, 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 something that is going to affect how your monitors are going to respond. Anyway, you're going to go to... Effect... Personas and Tone Generator. And you just drag that right on. It's going to come right up. You're going to see right here um, we've got wa uh, waveform. We're going to want to make that pink noise. Okay, we're going to want to take our level. I want to make that negative 20 dB and then we are going to want to open up let's wait one second all right 
we're going to, want to open up our console, which is the shortcut is F3. The reason why we need the console is because you can see right here is your pan. We're at center right now. You're going to want to be able to adjust for your left and for your right monitor. So let's start with the right monitor right now. Basically what we're going to do is we are going to you got it's an off right now you're going to click it to on and then when I click it on you're going to hear this pink noise being generated and then we are going to use our SPL meter to read its uh, where uh, the level where the what level the pink noise is 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 making the noise at and there it goes So like on your SPL meter at this point, going through my right speaker, you're going to see I'm at sixty-two. So what I would want to do is I would want to increase that output on the back of my monitor. Each monitor has different configurations but for the most part they're all going to have a, a volume you're going to turn it up until depending on the size of your room for mine I go for about 75 dB for the size of my studio uh, the larger the room obviously the louder or the higher the dB you're going to want to get going into the SPL meter so you may have to um, turn you know your volume up pretty high in order to get that kind of level into your SPL meter and you are monitoring from the area with which you mix at so um, I'm going to turn around I would do it right from here in my studio these are my monitors here if they were projecting the, the studio noise that is where I would be uh, having my SPL meter a lot of times what I do is I get um, my music stand, I set my music stand up and uh, that I, I, I set that at the level of where my ears would be or my head would be. So I, and then I set my tablet or my iPhone on uh, the uh, mu music stand um, in order to get capture the signal that comes out of my studio monitors. Obviously, when you're done getting your level right for your right side, you would take your uh, pan knob and move it over to your left, and you would repeat the process again. Um, when you're done, you're done. When you've got the levels uh, at the same spot for both left and right, you can just switch it to off. You can close the program you have just calibrated your monitors um, I'm going to uh, bring in my um, my regular video camera and I'm going to take a video of me doing it on my actual rig and show you how quick you can do it it, it literally you can do this uh, if you've got a client coming over you can do this when they pull up in the drop in, in your yard or your facility I mean it you can do it just like that um, uh, less than a minute. You could probably calibrate your monitors um, once you've done it a couple times and you know exactly what you're doing. Um, uh, but I did want to make this statement. Um, this is th this really is just as important as anything else you can do uh, when you purchase equipment. If your equipment is not calibrated calibrated properly, it doesn't matter really how good it is. If it's not operating efficiently, it is going to give you less than optimal results. So it's just like a car. You take a car to get an oil change. You take a car to get a tune-up. Same thing with your monitors. you got to calibrate your monitors to make sure you're getting optimal output from them in order to allow yourself to mix optimally. Um, and that's what we're trying to accomplish here. We want to get the best sound out of our monitors to give us the best chance to get the best quality we can. Okay, um, please... Feel free to comment um, below any questions you have, any videos you would like to see me uh, uh, make that uh, would, would help you with any problems you're having. 
I can, I'm not going to say that I can answer all your questions, but what I will try to do is point you in a direction where you can get, you know, the answer you're looking for. Um, again, don't don't click off on the video. Uh, as soon as I go away here, I'm going to um, tag on um, a video of me doing it on in my, in my studio rig, so you can actually see it in real time. Okay, all right. Um, I got more videos coming up here shortly. I'm going to do some um, uh, high pass frequency showing you. I've, I've mentioned that to some people here the last couple of weeks on how to clean up their mixes, take some mud out. And some people are like, well, how do you do that? Well, what are you talking about? So I'm going to show a, a video on how to uh, high pass, uh, put some high pass frequency filters on a session, as well as how to frequency sweep uh, when you're looking for problematic frequencies. Also, when you're looking how to enhance certain frequencies or to make certain instruments jump out in a mix. In, order, in other words, you're going to carve out certain frequency ranges for certain instruments. All right. Thank you very much. You'll have a great day. And again, please um, like, comment, and share my videos to your heart's content. God bless. I'm going to try to give you an idea of how this looks. Basically, I'm sitting... I've got my stand at approximately head level. I've got the SPL meter, which is on my tablet, setting right where about my head would be when I mix. There's my left and my right speaker. And I'm going to turn on the uh, pink noise inside of uh, Studio One. Look at this number right here. Setting is C weighted, it's flow, but my range is set at 80 dB. See, I'm getting right about 76 dB when I stop talking. Once you got that set, then you go. over to your left you do the same thing. I'm going to turn that off real quick. Alright, what I want to show you is on the back of my monitor. There's my volume. That's what I'm turning to turn the output from the monitor uh, louder. I'm not adjusting the volume from the doll. I'm not adjusting the volume from my you my uh, digital interface. I'm adjusting the volume, which is on the back of my studio monitors, both left and right. Uh, that's how you calibrate your monitors. Again, you can get it pretty cheap. Uh, you can get them free, uh, the SPL meters. You can go get, I think, get one for $25 at Radio Shack. But the important thing is that, again, it is C-weighted, and that you can do a slow calibration speed. Those are the two important things um, when you are uh, using an SPL meter. You don't want to get a, a download a free one, or more importantly, you don't want to spend money on one that turns out that it doesn't have these uh, two features on it, because then it's not going to give you the most accurate reading for uh, calibrating your monitors. All right, thank you very much. Have a great day.